All right, BookTube, so it's another month and time for another book haul. Uh, just go over a little bit of channel news real quick, maybe. I was, I've was i been thinking about getting a camera, uh, but I've just been spending too much money on books, so <laughs> maybe in the future we'll see some improvement in audio and visual quality. For now, you'll just have to deal with my camera on my phone and watch me keep buying books. Also, this is a new area. I'm in my home office here. I like to call this the Carmel Cave. It's a basement office with no windows, but I kind of like it. I can, I work from home. I can get a lot of work done here. I can play my music. I can do whatever and not bother anyone else. Um, also, it's hard to tell here. Maybe I'll put another picture to show what's going on here, but there's this little alcove in my office, and I've used it for various things since we've been here. But I thought it would be perfect for some new bookcases. And I teased it a little while ago that I was moving some of my books into this new area. I know what you're thinking. This isn't that impressive. We, you just went down to Target and bought some bookshelves for $37. I understand where you're going there. I mean, these are press board bookshelves. You put them together with tools that are included in the box. I know, I know, but trust me, as soon as I got these in here, I came up with a whole new plan. These will serve their purpose for now, but eventually I'm gonna build a custom bookshelf in this area that's specifically just the right height for um, these little paperbacks. So this whole cove, I kind of, I think I'm going to call it Musty Cove. It will be just solid wall to ceiling and I have a little area to do a little elbow in here. And it's all going to be paperbacks, hopefully all mostly vintage science fiction paperbacks. And I'll move these shelves to a different place in my office here and we'll go from there. So that's just a little housekeeping on some of the plans I've got for the future of the channel. So stick stick around and... Hopefully there's some really cool things to come. So let's get into the book haul. Uh, first I'll start with kind of an oddity. This, so I'll talk a lot about, when I mention the list, the books that are on this list, that's my Masterpieces of Science Fiction from Easton Press, that curated list. I've been going around trying to find a lot of books on the list. I want to hopefully get all 140 soon. I'm pretty close. I think I'm only missing about 30. And what I'd like to do is dedicate some of these shelves to that that series and have a visual representation of all the 140 books that I'm going to read. And then as I read them, I might, I'll move them over to like the done shelf. So that's kind of my idea. And you'll see a lot of these books that I've been getting are from that list. Now, this is one of the most interesting books that is on that Masterpieces of Science Fiction list. And it's Edwin A. Abbott, Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions. It's kind of funny because they had this book listed. I don't know if you can see the price tag, but it was listed as a romance book because it had romance in the title, I guess. But this is a very, very short 70-page 70 or 80 page little book that is very old, written in 1884. So that's just kind of an interesting thing I acquired. Also over at Sci-Fi Bookery, um, Josh has talked a lot about Frederick Brown and his books are hard to find, especially good condition old vintage paperbacks and kind of gave up and I found a good deal on these this Nefsa Press edition of all of Frederick Brown's novels. So this is a big compilation of all of the novels he's written. I believe there's like about seven or eight books in here. What Mad Universe is the first book that's in this compilation, and that is on the science fiction, masterpiece of science fiction list, so that was one reason I wanted that. And then I couldn't resist, they also have a omnibus of all of his short stories, same from Nefsa Press. 
So I went ahead and picked that up too. So I think I have everything Frederick Brown pretty much has published and I'll just try to get to those eventually. Now this is a kind of a different one. I don't know if it's fully science fiction. I found this at a at a um, thrift store for like a buck. And it's The Businessman by Thomas M. Dish. It is actually a first edition. It's got the price tag in there and full number line and all that. I, I Like I said before, I used to run a, a little online bookshop in the early 2000s and I cared so much about whether a book was a first edition, whether it was a first printing. And I totally understand a lot of people are into that and I was totally into that. Kind of given up on that now and I just kind of like to have a good condition copy of a book and if it has some cool artwork that's definitely something I'm looking for. But doesn't mean that I can't um, notice something like that when I'm out and about and it's always good to get a first printing every once in a while especially if you can get it for a buck. Now here's kind of a little bit of a beat up book club edition of A Stranger in a Strange Land, Robert Heinlein. And the book itself's in good condition. Dust jacket's a little beat up. Whenever you have dark colors on a dust jacket, it's gonna show some wear. So picked up that. Then I got a couple newer-ish books. Joe Haldeman, The Forever War and Forever Peace. Both of these books are part of the Masterpieces of Science Fiction, so got those in good condition. And I got Blue Or Orbits by George Zabrowski. This one's in really good shape. Pick this up. The Heart of the Comet, David Brin and Gregory Bren Benford. It's a collaboration by these two guys. I got a big lot of books from eBay that had some books I was specifically looking for and then there was a bunch of others and I didn't have much really promise that these books were going to be in good shape and it turned out a lot of them were in, in really good condition so I was pretty excited about it. Then I got Gregory Benford Timescape. This is on the list and it's in perfect condition so I was happy to get that. Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is an older edition. I think it's a later printing, but it was just in perfect condition. And I couldn't pass it up. It's got a cool cover and everything. I think I got this at a local bookstore. Bought so many books, it's kind of hard to keep track of where you get them at sometimes. Now, also I made an order from book outlet and uh, I got first person that signed up with my code so I got free five dollars to spend so thank you for whoever did that. I'll post it down there again if you want to sign up and we'll each get free five bucks for some books. So Flowers for Algernon, Daniel Keys. that's a classic, it's on the list. Once again it has a remainder mark on the bottom but other other than that it's a brand new oversized paperback. The Crystal World by J.G. Ballard. This one, another oversized paperback. Brand new from Book Outlet. It had the little mark on the top. Then I picked up kind of a newer version of Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 Space Odyssey. I Probably eventually replace this with the, the original kind of classic cover, but for now that'll be a good placeholder. George Orwell, 1984. Another one from Book Outlet, pretty perfect condition. Charles Stross, Glass House. I've heard a bit about him recently. I've never read anything by him, so this was a few bucks. Picked it up. And then I got this set of five uh, H.G. Wells books and I recently just read The Doc the Island of Dr. Moreau and it also came with The First Man in the Moon, The Time Machine and other stories. 
The Invisible Man, and The War of the Worlds. And this, this was sold as a, it was a shrink wrap set, so there's no remainder marks or anything on that. And I think it was like eight or nine dollars or something for the whole set, so couldn't pass that up. Okay, next we're going to get into some pretty interesting books. So Orson Scott Card, Treason. This is a standalone science fiction he wrote. Never really have heard much about it. It was part of that big lot of like 50 books that I got on eBay. So sounds pretty interesting. Might give that a go. The Postman by David Brin. Really bad movie. It's supposed to be a pretty good book. It's on the list of masterpieces of science fiction. So I'll be reading that at some point. Now, Vonda N. McIntyre, she has two books on the list, and I found a lot on eBay. Someone was selling five books of hers for a really good price, and so I'll go over the, the ones that aren't on the list first. So there's Barberry, and that is pretty cool. It's got some people in a spaceship with a cat. Sounds like fun. Transition, really cool cover here. Some really interesting stuff going on there in space. I don't know if you can make that out, but pretty cool. I've never read anything from her yet, so I'm excited to try her out. Super Liminal, pretty neat cover there. Now these are the two that are actually on the list of the masterpiece of science fiction. The Moon and the Sun. And all these were in pretty good shape. This one, I, I really want to read this soon. I might read this next. It seems kind of interesting. It, from what I can tell, it's almost a mixture of uh, fantasy, historical fiction, and science fiction. And it sounds like nothing I've really read before, so that is intriguing me. I might have to check that out. And then probably her most famous work, Dream Snake. That's got a pretty cool cover. And this this is the only one that he, it has like one crease on the spine, but other than that, books are in really good shape. Okay, next I got Robert Sawyer, The Terminal Experiment. This is kind of a newer book. Um, but it's in perfect shape. I got Greg Bear Darwin's Radio. This was in that big lot of science fiction, and that works out really good because I already had Darwin's Children, and so now I have the duology. So those can go on the bookshelf together. And then I got some books here. This is a Kim Stanley Robinson trilogy. Um, very climate based from what I can tell. This first book, you got to be careful with some of these online retailers. I think I got this one from like Thrift Books or one of them. And you just never know what you're going to get. I think this was listed as a very good book and you can tell it's kind of chipped up here and it's kind of got a little bit of a lean and some creases on the spine, but they don't show you a picture. I kind of learning my lesson, maybe not to buy stuff from them. But then I got 50 degrees below and this one is brand new, perfect condition. And then the final book in the series, 60 Days and Counting. Um, just interesting trilogy. I, I haven't really read much from Kim Stanley Robinson, but the guy seems really cool. I, I like his style and I'll get into some of his books, like the Mark, Mars series, for sure I'll be reading. It's on the Masterpieces of Science Fiction list. Um, but he's written a ton of other stuff that sounds great. Next is my favorite grouping of books. These are all really cool vintage science fiction, good condition, and cool covers. So this one, Lester Del Rey and Eric Van Lynn, Police Your Planet. And really nice shape. 
little creasing. Robert Silverberg, A Time of Changes. Now look at that cover here, a pull out. And check that out. Another good one. Clifford Simak, A Choice of Gods. Really cool cover. He had this era, I think, you know, he wrote those classics and then he had this era and the artwork and the use of like pastels and everything. I just, I like a lot of the original covers of this, this batch of books he wrote. Norman Spinrad, The Solarians. Good vintage paperback. Once again, really good shape except for a little ripping there. Clifford Simak, Time and Again. This is a book I read a long time ago, but look at that cover. It's really cool. Algis Burgess, I believe I said that right, I don't know. Rogue Moon. Now this one is almost in perfect condition. And look what's going on here. Is, is that like lobster claws or something? I don't know. But really good shape. Okay, so last little grouping here. A few books. Campus, James E. Gunn. So just same artwork on the back. That one's in pretty good shape, a little creasing. Now this, it kind of bothers me sometimes when you have these classic books with such good covers and then they reprint them. And I know it has to do with copyright and artists and all that. But Philip K. Dick, most of his books now are just these super generic covers. And you can find the books because most of the older ones are hard to find, but I managed to find this, The Man in the High Castle. Really cool cover. Really like this one, and it's in very, very good condition. So I was really happy to find that. Got a couple by Fritz Leiber, The Wanderer. Now this one is probably in, in kind of some of the worst condition. It actually has some tape to repair a little bit of a tear, but it's actually in pretty good condition for a book. It was issued at 75 cents and probably released back in the 60s. Another one of his, The Big Time. This one is in really good shape. Pretty interesting cover art there. Nothing really on the back. Then I got Rogers Lansney, This Immortal. This one is in very good condition. Larry Niven, Ringworld. I know there's some better artworks on, on some of these books, but this one was just like a brand new old paperback, so I couldn't resist that. Barry Ann Malsberg, Beyond Apollo. Hopefully this doesn't get my unmonetized channel demonetized for this somewhat nudity, although there is little suns or something over the interesting bits. So we should be okay there. The Moon Pool, A Merit. Very cool looking cover. And this is another vintage paperback that is in almost perfect condition. Jonathan Fast, Mortal Gods. Now I'll pull out here, but then let's let's dig in and see what's going on on this cover. I mean, come on. They're not making covers like this anymore. This one's in good shape. Never read anything from Jonathan Fast, but interested to check it out. And then another Clifford Simak, Way Station. And this one, 
I've seen this book around a lot, but never in this condition. It's got the red end block. It does have a stamp on the top, May 5th. But other than that, and, and you can tell these older books, even though they might be in good condition, they're going to have some yellowing. And then probably the most perfect book I've ever seen, L. Sprague de Camp, Rogue Queen. And this book is in near perfect condition. And really happy with that. And there's that cover again, I like the green tones and all that. So that's where we stand. That's about another 50 books to add to the bookshelf. Um, I've been buying more beyond that. So expect a part two book haul for the month of May. Um, other than that, just reading. I'm reading The Inverted World right now by, I think it's Christopher Priest. So just got into that book this morning. And after that, I'll probably be picking another book off the list to read from the Masterpiece of Science Fiction. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. It's kind of a longer one. Um, but if you stuck around, I thank you very much for watching my videos and excited to see the channel growing. So have a good one and we'll see you on the next one.